I hope this can do one damage. Uno damage does five randomly to stuff. What do we hit? What do we hit? And welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Sivir LeBlanc. We're going to be trying out another Reputation deck. This is always a fun combination to play. You get to do a lot of attacking and your units are really good at attacking. Both champions have a quick attack and they have a lot of power, a 5-2 and a 5-3. So they're really hard to block, right? You're getting five quick attack in, lots of attacking in like that. Um, and of course you have a lot of other things that it's going to be dealing five damage, a lot of five power units. And that's important for both champions. Sivir, you want to deal a lot of damage. You want to deal 30 to level it up. LeBlanc needs to see you do 15 to level it up. But then you also want to be able to enable reputation for your whisper words and your incisive tactician. This is a, a card that has been updated with patch 211 that is now going to be a 5-5. Five five. And that's important because if you have Incisive Tactician as a 5-5, five five, we are now able to copy um, Incisive Tactician with Mirror Image, and you summon a copy of it, and therefore you get the Summon ability now that it has 5 plus power. And so that Summon ability, of course, is going to be to Rally. So if we have the Incisive Tactician, we get to play it, Rally, and then do a bunch of damage, create a Mirror Image, copy it again with the LeBlanc and keep rallying. And that's a, a pretty good combo finishing out the game. Besides that, the other, besides like having five plus power things and dealing lots of damage, the other part of our deck is going to be vulnerable. Like that's the other, that's like our main interaction. And we got lots of vulnerable in here. We got Merciless Hunter, Bakai Sand Spinner, Rock Hopper making Roiling Sands for vulnerable, and then even two copies of Exhaust giving enemies minus two, minus zero, and vulnerable. And the reason why vulnerable is important is because we have so many units that are great with vulnerable. Not only both of our champions with the quick attack, um, you know, being able to just mow things down, but our one drops also. We got two one drops, Thrashing Snapper. If if we have an enemy block the Thrashing Snapper, it turns into a 5-1. And Treasure Seeker um, that creates the Waking Sands which makes the 5-2 ephemeral. So that's another 5 power attacker that if they have something that's vulnerable, we get to throw this ephemeral into that vulnerable um, blocker. And th those are both very good things against vulnerable and help out everything else in the deck. How about the, the reputation? Help out, um, you know, the Sivir, LeBlanc level up and everything like that. So, all right, let's get to it. Let's go and play our games. This is going to be Sivir, LeBlanc. Looks pretty interesting. Vulnerable and reputation. Here we go. Braum Lux. Looks like we have a Poro deck. Braum Lux is playing um, the six mana Poro card, Aurora Porealis. So it goes great with both of those cards. We're going to just keep the Rock Hopper and Mulligan the rest. Nothing wrong with Sand Spinner. But I'm going to send it back for now. There we go. Try to have a better curve out. Try to find our champions. All that kind of stuff. Watch your head. Okay, I will start prediction. I'm gonna go with the Glory Seeker. I think I want to, like, with having this incisive tactician in hand, I think I want to try to enable, you know, play the Glory Seeker, try to get to uh, reputation. Which then I, I then decided to just. Simply play this thing, and so. Yeah, we just do this. I guess it didn't matter. Which one I played first if I was playing the other? Okay, one out of four. Nothing's lost. It's just waiting to be found. And you won't believe what we found today. If this all strikes, which is a big if, but if this all strikes... 
Wealth is merely a foolish distraction, my dear. Then call me a rich, distracted fool. Watch your head. Five. My Danger pays. Smoke and mirrors. They don't have judgment mana. Looks like maybe they're going single combat on the LeBlanc, block this thing. Huh. Oh, I didn't consider Avalanche. Well, maybe I should have been thinking about Avalanche and playing around it, or just going to win the game, one of the two. Hmm. Wonder what cards they had in hand. Here's Lissandra Talia. Why couldn't we face this deck with our Ezreal Swain deck that was built to defeat it? That would have been nice. We're going to go ahead and get rid of the Rock Hopper and the Bloody Business. We'll keep our five power things. We don't need to have like a lot of things die immediately to Avalanche and Ice Shard and things like that. At least we don't need to keep multiple two mana things. Oh, I didn't attack. I don't... Hmm. My bad. I was kind of under the impression, and I don't know why I was, but I was kind of under the impression that I did I didn't have the attack token, <laughs> and I don't know why that was. Well, that's a lot better than I shard. Okay, let's start over. Roll that 18. What's up, Attack? Doing pretty good? Having some fun? Um, I want to play LeBlanc right here. Yeah, yeah. I mean... But then again, I wanted to have like House Spider and have like the Spiderling challenge, that thing. It's just. House Spider's not doing a whole lot. I kind of want to help. I kind of want to try to turn on Reputation. So I could go like LeBlanc, LeBlanc kill it, and Waking Sands, and Waking Sands do five to them. And do two out of four for Reputation. Or I just do like. I guess I could have like the, th the Thrashing Snapper kill it, and that's a Reputation strike. I guess this is still... Yeah, they could be playing Ice Shard, but they, they didn't have Ice Shard the last round. Right? Like, if they have Ice Shard now, that's... different. They didn't have it the last round. There's still two Reputation Strikes, I suppose. Just like playing LeBlanc. Wow, I guess now they do have a reputation. Or they do have Ice Shard. All those things are pretty low value though, right? Like those are just like a creative card, a rock hopper, a one drop, like all things that are gonna be dying to their their avalanches and all that kind of stuff. Anyway. I didn't have anything that was I didn't have any good cards there. And we got a lot of damage on them. They're down to ten. So, could be worse. Just had to play this before an avalanche. 
Heroes go hungry. I really wish I would have played against this with that Ezreal Swain deck that I had. Because I lose to it all the time, and like the one time I play like a deck with a lot of landmark removal, <laughs> we don't get to play against it. It's like, come on. How was that fair at all? Make it worth my while. I will run you over. I hate doing this. I mean, I don't... I hate it. My a family of fools makes a circus, not a kingdom. This'll take the chill off. Let us plan ahead. It's just waiting to be found. That's the correct thing to do. Feel the power of true ice. Business as usual. I only have two bloody business in the deck if that exhaust is a bloody business. I guess wouldn't have helped out as much, but... GG's. It's so frustrating, I just lose to this deck all the time, and the one time I play a deck that's good against it, we never get paired against it. <laughs> I can see us doing pretty good against Lurkers. They don't block very well. We do not want... I do like bloody business in here, but like it, we need like earlier stuff. Like I like both of these cards, but we need we need an earlier, faster curve. We don't want reckoning. They are able to get their units out of reckoning pretty quickly. I guess we're just not going to find anything that costs one, two, or three mana. Of course, over over half of the deck costs one, two, or three mana, but none of those in our first four. None of them in the second four. There we go. Finally, okay. We're back in there. Steady now. Maybe they miss. It's not very likely they're gonna miss. Oh, yes. <laughs> After they play that call the back card, not very likely they're going to miss anymore. It's a good thing they played it too, because it looks like. Honor is the rest on a dull play. Here's your path. Looks like they had um, 
Uh, like, they would have missed, because it looks like the Feral Presence was, like, the, the next card they just drew afterwards. You've got a problem, I've got a price. Business as usual. Alright, so we're three out of four for Reputation. So we know they have another Rek'Sai. For how they hit with a 3x earlier. It's still unlikely that that Rek'Sai hits as a 3x, right? I guess they're telling me they have a th the third Rek'Sai on top. That would not be good. Third Rex Eye would be pretty bad. Or, I guess they just have Pike in hand. That has to be Pike, there's no other card. Question is what to do here. Ricochet is very risky but could be very good like right now we're like very dead right all they have to do oh no because this thing isn't going to get to 10 unless this gets to 10 power because i guess that's the way it gets overwhelmed it is with 10 power so i guess i could could just play the leblanc because that's got to be that's the safest thing and then next round i go sivir plus other stuff okay because right now let's see so pike kills sivir this thing goes Gets tucked back in. We block. Wealth is merely a foolish distraction. Then call me a rich, distracted fool. When you play the Lurk deck, always put your Rek'Sai first. Very glad it wasn't a Rex High for that. You have to be worried about the two mana free attack. That's something that I haven't been worried about enough whenever I play this deck in the past. Fearsome Overwhelm Spell Shield. It's not a bad combination of things to have. Um, we've seen it in the past, like Rek'Sai, like card, like some of the, like these other cards, like Rek'Sai buff up afterwards, and like they don't get like the bonus, like having like like this thing happen first. Okay, so I need something just to block that. So they have no challenge. Oh man, Pike levels up though, so Pike's gonna just kill everything. All my stuff's gonna die anyway, so that's okay. Let's see. Let's just take this first. Get rid of the fearsome overwhelm. We need more bloody business in this deck. Minus one to the five cost isn't going to be good because they'll still have like if they attack, they hit the lurk, it goes back to the five plus power. So I'm I'm considering doing the exhaust on that thing. Considering doing that, like exhaust, and then rock hopper. Why Rock Hopper over Snapper? I guess just get that. That's all. You're dead meat. Oh, really? That gets through spell? I guess it's not a spell, so it gets through spell shield. Alright, well. Pike is ridiculous. I was very good at drawing Pike. 
When I kill an enemy, I strike the weakest enemy. I guess if it's dead, it doesn't strike. So if that's the case, maybe I don't need Whirling Death. Wait. Maybe I don't need to Whirling Death? Because then this thing's dead. Oh no, I need a Whirling Death because then this thing just blocks. Uh, yeah, I guess I need to Whirling Death. Oh, what am I doing? No, I guess I did need a Whirling Death. Yes! Uh. So, this. I was still dead to open attack if I would have if I would have done like the other challenge and with Whirling Death, I was still dead to the open attack. They drew very well whenever the, the last, you know, couple of rounds, whenever they had no cards in hand, drawing Pike and then drawing that thing was just perfect. Like, Pike, Pike obviously just won that game. So, GG's. <laughs> yep, that's the story of, yep, that's the story of that deck. They draw Pike, GG. And they had, you know, we dealt with the first Pike or two and... I don't remember if that was the second or third pike, I don't remember. Played a lot of games today. Time. Play any more time. Gently, gently. <laughs> Going with the rock hopper second. With vulnerable. Suns beneath me and winds behind. If they have like zillion, that's not great for playing this first instead of just attacking, but like anything else we want to play that before attacking. Step lightly. Because I don't you know like Wow. Okay. What a shame for you. No. Running hot. My board. So we have four cards with this created card. They have four cards with the two one. Get him, Sivir. Just out of reach. Obviously, I could have like the Sivir challenge, but then like the four three trades with the three three, and I kind of like doing this more. We love it when they run. Stop. We need more whirling deaths, and and uh, that's. That's what I've really learned with these these games. I usually play three Whirling Death, three That's Bloody right. Business with this deck. And we just never have Whirling Death and Bloody Business, and that's like the only card that we've needed like this whole time. Quit struggling. So that's that's been that's like the thing that I've kinda of learned from these. Like we have we have too many one one drops and two drops. I think I kinda of wanna just get rid of House Spider. I think that's the card to get rid of. Or you know, Thrashing Snapper. One of those two. But we definitely have, we have too many one drops and two drops that don't uh, don't fare well later on in the game, and not enough like powerful effects. Not not enough remove. We both whirling death and bloody business are like two cards to just make this deck. They have three of those things now. You've got a problem, I've got a price. Hey, if it isn't that cat I rescued this morning. Hmm. Danger 
Obviously, I was going to attack with that, but I guess they didn't want... They didn't want me to attack with that first. They could have, you know, gotten the free kill with the Echo. So I'm fine with this, you know, like, this is going to help help us out in the longer game, which their deck is designed, like, they need to play the longer game. So I'm happy about it. You never... <laughs> There's just no Whirling Deaths. No Whirling Deaths or Bloody Business in this deck. There's just none. That's that's the problem with our deck. We need Whirling Death and, and Bloody Business. I'm passing the priority here, letting them do their time trick first so they have less information whenever they're choosing which card to get. And now I do have that information about the Hexite Crystal as well. No, I'm not trying. No, not dragging Echo with Sivir because I feel like if they like the, if they got removal here, they want to kill Sivir. Like if, if like this is any ability to kill something, they like they they're incentivized to try to kill Sivir, and so I want to split that up. I don't want to make like the thing the the one card that they really want to kill and the one card they really want to save. I don't want to put those next to each other. Yeah, I mean, I, I have to do three damage to level up the Sivir, and so we'll just have that with the Merciless Hunter, and then the rest of them will have the Spell Shield, Quick Attack. I guess that does give them the time trick. But I wanted to, you know, save Ruin Runner, save this, save that. I wanted to save these three things. Okay, so that was uh, really bad by me. I needed to pull it. Yeah, that was really bad by me. Yep, I needed a challenge with the second unit for the, because of that, like that for for this specific scenario. Lesson learned. I w I just you know I was thinking about all the other things. I just didn't think about I didn't think about zero mana time trick that the echo was gonna get right. Like that wasn't something that I considered at all. I was I was really just considering about like my units and what I'm doing with them and and things like that and. Yeah, I didn't consider that. So, let's see how lucky we are with Sivir. Three to the Nexus. Not very lucky at all. Yeah, I mean, that's... <laughs> you know, keep learning, right? Keep learning. Like, that's something I'm never, ever going to do again, right? Like, I'm going to always remember... Uh, the Echo can get the zero mana time trick, which can get the, the Chrono Break, which gets everything back, right? Like, this is something that I, I will always remember, and this is some a mistake I'll never make again. And that's the thing about playing with new cards and everything. Uh, you know, those of y'all watching, you know, like, hopefully this is something that you see and realize, okay, never make that mistake again. <laughs> Cause yeah, they get the re resummon effect with this. You 
lost. Nice to punch you. Good lesson learned. Yeah, hopefully still winnable. You guys gonna be okay? Scared of a fair fight? Hopefully. I don't think it's worth playing anything else, is it? Probably not. I, give you I don't know. I don't know if I'm supposed to be playing these or not. Oh, Cordex says don't open. I should have looked at chat. Really glad not seeing the Hexite Crystal. Because I guess, like, the Hexite Crystal is... I was worried about that, but, like, with putting the... Overwhelm on something that survived the Hexite Crystal. I haven't played against Discard Burn in a while. This is a wonderful Whirling Death matchup. Um, not necessarily a bad Rock Hoppa matchup. Want to keep cheap units? Yeah, so open attack, basically the only way they could stay alive is they draw like that time trick, which they did, and then hit to hit both crystals or a crystal plus like a mystic shot, you know, something to give her the A3. So that's how they could stay alive. With playing other units, it gave them the out of, again, that time twist plus crystal or two, like two crystals or gave them the out of playing predict unit plus then getting the crystals from the predict units you know it took out all like the predict units so like it was just like or like advanced pre preparations all that so like it gave them only time twist was the only out time twist plus luck Would you look at this place? yeah so not not punished for our our uh, echo challenge um, but you know, learned a very valuable lesson in there as well. Oh, I have the attack token? I have the attack token? Ugh, I should have had my thrashing snapper attack the rear guard and do five. Sorry, it's the end of a late stream, right? Like, this is why I don't usually play five decks. <laughs> it's, man, get, playing five decks, you know, 25 games in one day straight, like, where you're playing all these different decks and it's just so much, and, you know, streaming and everything like that, it's, it's difficult. I can understand streamers just playing, like, one deck in a day, like, where, or, you know, like, you know, staying on the same deck for, like, a long time, like, where you get really used to that deck and, and things like that. <sighs> all right, so... You're going to block there, you're going to block there, and I'm going to take each of you. No, I mean, I may, might as well just block there. You're going to... Yeah. Yeah, fatigue's a thing, for sure. And especially when you're you're just playing such different decks all the time. Like, by me, yeah, like, playing just all these different decks. Like, yeah, I, I do get fatigued. Now we're cooking. I'm really liking this bloody business right now. I still like where we're at. I wish I would have had my my two one challenge. You know the rear guard. They would they changed. They sorry they traded anyway. But I would have been two out of four, which is really important. Business as usual. Rules are made to be like people. You should try blinking. Sometime. That two out of four is really important because right now it would have been three out of four and then this would have made it four out of four. So like we would have had reputation enabled. The whirling death was a great draw. Again, another way to kill this thing. Give you to the counter. 
So we at least found we finally found our bloody businesses and whirling deaths. Only playing two of each of those, but we finally found them and they are critical. Reputation enabled in case this doesn't work, in case they have multiple removal spells. They would need, like, Draven Whirling Death plus Get Excited or Mystic Shot. Awesome, they don't have it. The other thing about having that 2-1 challenge is that would have been 3 additional damage, so therefore Sivir would be leveled up right now. Sivir is now 2 damage away from leveling up. So we could have had a leveled up Sivir. Lots of good things would have been better, but... We're still looking good. Still looking good. I'm on the verge of something. What silence without a little miss? Wow. I need just a moment. We love it when they run. Yeah, Draven's got to feel pretty bad getting hit by his own spell. I guess it's kind of risky. I'm gonna do this. Cool. Turns that Sivir into being four power or four health. Harder for them, and you know, like leveled up, so we get the quick attack immediately. Harder for them to just like get excited and kill it. Gets rid of a blocker. All that stuff. Boom ba boon. Good card. Just you and me, fish bones. Boom ba boon. Ba boom ba boon. Yes. Whirling death. Being great. Bloody business, bloody business? Bloody business? Bloody business? No. Ba boom ba boom. The party has arrived. Watch your step. They're getting back in this for sure. Champions are good. Time for the money makers. I think that, like this O2 should be challenging the Merciless Hunter. I guess then the Sivir would just block the 1-1 one, one or the 2-2. Two, two. I was going to say it makes it difficult for like my Sivir to block. I guess I could still just throw it in front of a Spida. And I need the Sivir to block for Merciless Hunter. If I do Ricochet, I can't do Sand Spinner and Hunter. I hope this can do one damage. Uno damage does five randomly to stuff. What do we hit? What do we hit? Oh, we got the Nexus. That was pretty lucky. Wow, all five hit the Nexus. Okay, well, that was. That's perfect. That's exactly what we wanted. Victory. All right, so there we go. That was our Sivir LeBlanc list, three and two, not too bad. Um, as you know from watching those games, I definitely missed having three Whirling Death and Bloody Business. I was pretty sad about both of those. I think Reckoning may not be as good right now with how it's not very good against Lurkers. A little disappointed with that one. I think I think I could 
I think we could survive not having um, a reckoning, and so that could get some some space for there. And also even exhaust, I was I don't know a little disappointed with exhaust. A lot, I guess, just because I really wanted to have whirling death and bloody business, <laughs> to be honest. Um, yeah, so you know, like wasn't as impressed with those. So I could see getting rid of one of them just. But um, with that being said, the Snapper, the Seeker, that kind of stuff, you do really, really want the Vulnerable. I really like Glory Seeker, though. Glory Seeker is very good in these games. Um, it's a great challenger and, like, only two mana for this. I I would highly recommend playing three Trifarian Glory Seekers. And I think that's what I just kind of do over some of these. Like, like Thrashing Snapper, the very best Thrashing Snapper can be is, like, Trifarian Glory Seeker. Like, if, if everything works out for you, if you, like, use another card for Vulnerable and stuff like that. And so for, for one extra mana, I know it doesn't block, but I think I'm just getting the Glory Seekers in there. So what I would do is kind of maybe take out these exhausts, take out the Thrashing Snapper, like one Thrashing Snapper. That gives you five one drops. I think that's enough one drops. And then you get your Glory Seekers, and then you get your extra Whirling Death, Bloody Business. I think that's what I would kind of recommend doing. Let's get more Glory Seeker, more Whirling Death, more Bloody Business. All right, so there we go. So I think that that can uh, work things out. I like the Kato. I like the Incisive Tactician. Love Ruin Runner and Sivir, of course. That Spell Shield, really good. I think those are a couple of small changes I would make to the list. All right, so that's going to be it here, though, for Sivir LeBlanc. So those y'all watching later on YouTube, hit that like button over there, and feel free to leave those comments. Let me know if you've been playing this deck, how it's been going for you. If you're doing anything different, let me know. Uh, you know, I think this is a it's a it's a fun deck to play. I think it's very solid. You get to do a lot of attacking, and uh, I think it it is very good. You have spell shield. You have vulnerable, um, very good attackers. I think it's just a good solid deck. All right, but that's gonna be it here for Silver LeBlanc. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.